Hi friends, I showed up late to Pride, and no, I don't mean posting this video at the end of June. It was the summer of 2015 that I first came out to myself, about a month after the Obergefell decision came down to make same-sex marriage legal nationwide, mere eight years ago. Then I made a now-deleted video as an ally to talk about my joy for those other people. Maybe that's when my industrial strength horse blinders started slipping loose, when I started to see another way. But you know who else showed up late to Pride? Well, I found out when two years later I was working at a national LGBTQ plus nonprofit. My first day was June 1st and I was welcomed with a bursting inbox of brands wanting to do social media partnerships where if enough people used an AT&T or Kellogg's hashtag, they would donate the amount of money their company spends each day on paper clips. I also went to my first ever Pride Parade that year, not the official New York City celebration with its Wells Fargo floats and collective gawking at famous people, but the much smaller one in Brooklyn. It's always a folksier vibe with its softball leagues and Girl Scout troops and health clinics and churches. I made a video about it back then where I talked about the story that we all know that trailing behind a court case, which itself trailed behind public opinion, which itself trailed behind what was just and equal, that all the corporate support felt too little, too late, too love is love. The way they saw it, there was no fight left to fight after marriage, right? Because how many of these companies were even mentioning trans people until 2018 or 2020 even? And how fast has that all been withdrawn? Corporate participation and pride has always followed after the progress that the community has already achieved. It's never led the way. So I guess I wasn't that worried about Starbucks not putting up rainbow flags this year because Starbucks was never gonna lead the fight for trans rights. I knew they were only ever in it because it was profitable. I was worried because what does it mean that they no longer think that it will be profitable? What does it indicate about the public support for queer people that these companies always lag so far behind? And how will all of this ground that we've lost on the national scale impact my local community? Even in my beloved uncorporate Brooklyn Pride Parade, I worried that some of the churches and schools might withdraw even if they did still claim to affirm queer people. Especially because a lot of them march with families and young kids. Like you know how Target pulled some of its pride merch not because they didn't believe in selling us things, but because they were worried that like transphobes would come be violent in their stores. And I don't know, bigots love to run their mouths about New York City. It's not impossible that they would show up here just to make a point. So I was bracing myself that the vibe would be off. But the only participant I saw the only person that usually shows that backed out this year was the man, the myth, the crystal guy, Mayor Eric Adams. Nowhere to be found, no one from his office even. So instead the head of the parade was our city comptroller. Other than that, no changes. I saw just as many schools as usual, kids marching with their queer parents, parents marching with their queer kids, Probably some kids who just showed up because they like collecting stickers and candy. One of the schools was giving out like buttons with rainbow artwork that the kids drew on it, which I treasure. The religious institutions still showed up, mostly in groups, but there was one guy from an Orthodox church marching with a banner alone because he believed that his being there was still important. In some ways, I think that we got an even bolder showing this year. Like the public library always marches with a bookmobile van handing out rainbow bookmarks, but this year they specifically printed new bookmarks with information about their drag story hours. And they had those drag queens marching with them because they want to be crystal clear that these events are still happening. They want you to know that kids understand dressing up in costume and telling stories. They wanted to make it clear to the community that they were not shrinking from this moment where like outrage at drag story hours specifically has been like the Trojan horse for unprecedented levels of anti-trans legislation. It was the most defiant thing I've seen yet in this like pretty quaint family oriented parade. I think one of the best traditions of Brooklyn Pride is that the parade goes straight down one long street and it's closed out by just a van playing music on some big speakers. So when the end of the parade passes your block, you can just join in. You just get in the street behind the van and everybody gets to dance along and be a part of it and follow things down to the bars or wherever. So I was just like bopping along with my friends at the end of the parade and I had this bi flag in my hand, actually this one here. And at one moment I looked over and there was this group of like tween girls 
And the reason that I noticed them, because one of them was also holding a bi flag and they started waving it like really excited, like, hey, look, a bi flag. I've also got a bi flag. And I just kind of waved my flag back, like, cool, we match and continued on. Cause I get it. Whenever I see somebody repping bi colors, I'm also like, nice. It's like being on a road trip and seeing your home state's license plate. Now, did that kid need to see me? Were they starved for representation? Probably not, seeing as they figured out who they were a good decade faster than I did. I didn't change her mind or shape her identity in any way. She showed up to that parade and she already knew who she was, but it probably was important for kids like them to see that we showed up last year and we showed up this year and we'll show up again next year. Even if Starbucks or Target or the mayor or whoever are yellow-bellied little deserters, the local cheerleading squad and the HVAC company and like an 80 year old Greek Orthodox dude won't back down. I think that kid needed to see that no matter what, we take care of us because I needed to see it too. In comments, tell me how you're celebrating Pride this year. I will see you soon. Bye.